Hey, thanks for checking out Nuts and Bolts with Tone. Today we're going to talk about productivity, efficiency, what makes you a better technician, what helps, tips and tricks, things that I've learned over the years that you can do that make things a lot easier, and some ways that you can do it that aren't even expensive. So the first thing is, let's say you're taking apart something, you're doing a job, right? So you're taking apart something, excuse me, and you've never done it before. You have no idea what you're doing. Well, the first thing that you wanna do is you wanna go into the service manual and you wanna skim through the procedure, all right? So little things that you can, that you can gain by this. So let's say you're doing, I'm doing a rear engine cover on a Duramax. So when you're doing this job, if you skim through the procedure, you can save yourself some time. And you say, well, how can you save yourself some time? So if you skim through the procedure, you figure out right up front things that you have to do that you don't realize you have to do it. Now there's two reasons why you wanna do this. The first reason is, you want to skim through the procedure to make sure that you've covered all your bases as far as gaskets that you need, whether you need to, to uh, recover the, 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 the AC and you're going to need O-rings, uh, whether you're going to need to drain the coolant, whether you're going to need to drain the oil, transmission fluid, because you need to account for these things. So when you're selling the job up front, you really should skim through it in the beginning. So that way you can, you, you know, like, you know, do I need you know, uh, evac and recharge on the AC system. Well, that's like an hour. I mean, you're, you're, you're going to get an hour for that. You know, uh, do we need coolant? All right. Well, I mean, think about it. You know, you have a, a vehicle that takes three gallons of coolant. How much money is that? Well, if you don't sell that up front, guess what? That's money off the, off the profit. The shop eats that because you didn't sell it. So you got the coolant, you know, let's say you need, you know, a half a quart of power steering fluid. Let's say you need some power steering O-rings. Let's say you need some transmission fluid. You know, all of these things, you know, you, you have to account for. Uh, and the shop needs to the shop needs to account for it so they don't lose money when you sell these things. But the other reason is, so let's say you got the vehicle, it's down on the wheels, and you've skimmed through the procedure. Now let's get through to the nuts and bolts of it. How can this save you time and money? Well... As long as you are a, a technician that is getting paid, where maybe you're on flat rate, maybe you're on California modified flat rate, where you know, you're know you on some sort of efficiency bumper or whatever, you know, depending on how you get paid. You know, we can't have flat rate in California, but you know, let's say you're on some sort of efficiency bumper type of uh, work. So the more efficient you are, the, the, the higher your pay code goes up and uh or you know whatever you know flat rate whatever let's say you're hourly and you get you know bonused on hours commission whatever however you get paid but most of the time we're going to get paid on some sort of productivity based pay right because they want to they want to encourage you to work harder and faster and get work out well the way they do that is they encourage you with the opportunity to make more money so when you're when you're on this type of pay the way that this helps is you got the wheels on the ground right all right so you already know okay cool to do this rear engine cover on this duramax right? i'm just using this as an example because it's a perfect example got this did this duramax and you're going to do the rear engine cover right so you've already kind of skimmed through it transmission's got to come out right starter's got to come out well the wheels are on the ground so at this point, we've, we've determined that most of the work, it, all of the work is going to be done under the vehicle. Very little work above the vehicle, but some things that are going to be done. If you skim through the procedure, you find out that the upper oil pan's coming off. You find out that the transmission's coming out. So up top, what can we do? We can remove the dipsticks. We can, the dipstick out of the tube, we can disconnect the batteries. Okay, then we lift it up. We already know the starter's coming out and we've kind of skimmed through. Well, how do you get the starter out of a Duramax? 
you take the passenger wheel liner out. So now you've got on the ground, you've got the dipsticks out, you've got the batteries disconnected, you lift it up. And now you're taking out the wheel liner, you're taking off the wheel, taking out the starter while you're there, right? You lift it up. Well, now before you even touch anything at the back, you're at the front and you're draining the coolant because you already know the coolant runs through the rear engine cover. That's why we're resealing the engine cover because of coolant. So you're doing all of this. You got the coolant draining. You, you know, you got the, the transfer cases coming out, the transmission's coming out. So you start at the back and you're draining the fluid. And while you're working on that, you know, you go into the next thing and then you move up. Now you're draining the fluid out of the transmission. So you're doing all of these things and you're rolling along and you're getting everything done in the most efficient manner. But now what are some other things that we can do? Well, I will show you in a minute what it looks like when you utilize free things. So free things, how do we get free things? How, how can we use free items to help us be more efficient? Well, we all eat mashed potatoes, we all have butter, we all have lunch meat, right? All of these different types of things in your household, you're going to have one or more of these containers. And they're gonna be, you know, rectangle containers, maybe they're this tall. Maybe they're mashed potato containers and they're this tall. Maybe it's a butter dish. Maybe you, it's after Easter, which is coming up. Guess what? After Easter, if your kids die Easter eggs, you got these little plastic cups. They're about this big around and they're about that tall. Pink, yellow, green, blue, right? Usually have like six of those things. Keep those. I actually have Easter egg containers and I use them. Um, and so I will show you in a minute what it looks like when you have all of these different Tupperware dishes all over the place. So now when you take something apart, the most efficient way to do it is on this Duramax. See, I didn't read through the procedure. And as I'll show you, it's kind of a mess, but kind of not. It's a mess because it's not really the way I would normally lay it out. But it's not because I have everything separated. So the way I normally will lay it out is if I know, let's say, let's say I'm doing a, you know, a big head job, you know, an Infinity G37. Got heads on that. You got to drop the whole cradle. Well, I'm going to start all the way at the back and I'm going to start taking stuff apart and I'm going to start making a pile going all along the vehicle. And this is going to keep on going. All right. So I'm going to spread it all out. It's not going to be a big fat pile. Um, now some stuff you can make a pile. Maybe it's something you've done a lot of times. You know, you're doing an intake manifold on a on a Chevy 350. You're doing an intake manifold on a on a GM, you know, 3.1, 3.4, 3.8 liter. Something you've done a lot of times. Okay, not a big deal. That's not a big deal. I rarely even use Tupperware containers for those types of jobs. I usually have a cart right there side by my side, and I just throw everything on the cart. Um, but I, I do separate out things, you know even when I don't use the containers. So the way you do it is you're gonna separate out the containers. You're gonna separate it out. You're gonna have all the bolts for, you know, for the transfer case and you're gonna have them in one container. You're gonna have all of the bolts for the transmission in another. You're gonna have all of the bolts for taking out, let's say maybe, maybe the bell housing bolts. You wanna keep those separate so you don't get confused. Keep those in another container. You've got, you've got a, a plastic front shield and and how do you how do you do that? Well, you put that on the ground. You put the five bolts inside there. You have the cross member. You do the same thing. I'm going to show you what all that looks like. I'm going to fan around. I'm going to show you how I have everything kind of kind of together, kind of not. Kind of looks like a mess, but it's not. I know when I get into something, I grab a dish, I pull it up, I start working on that component. I know all of those bolts go to that component in some way or another. Now, other ways that you can be efficient, you have a valve cover. You're doing a valve cover on a, on a vehicle. Let's say you're doing a six liter valve cover and uh, you got studded, you got a valve cover on this thing and you got studded bolts and you got, and you got um, regular bolts. Ways that you can be more efficient, you get a little piece of paper. I do this every single time I get one, unless I've just taken one apart and then I just see if it's the same because sometimes they change. And I grab a clipboard with a piece of paper and I draw out a valve cover and I just draw out where all the studded bolts are, where all the studs are and where all the bolts are. And then I yank them all out and I throw them in a Tupperware dish. Do the same thing to the other side. I actually just have a mashed potato dish on each side. 
I take one side apart, throw all the bolts in that, take all the bolts out for the next thing, throw them all in that. Then let's say you get down to the oil rail and the oil rail is all the bolts are, are oil soaked. So I just throw a rag on top of the, the butter dish and I throw all the bolts in the rag. That way, hey, they're separated. I'm not digging through all the valve cover bolts to find these bolts for the oil rail. They're all right there. Pretty simple. So now I'm going to go, I'm going to fan this around. I'm going to show you what it's like when you keep things separated. And now I've seen the opposite where people don't do this. Now, other things that you want to do is you have a flywheel. Not all flywheels are notched. Not all flywheels have an actual dowel that shows you where the actual flywheel goes. So how do you, how do you determine where the flywheel goes? You take a paint pan and you mark across it, right? So let's say you have uh, a vehicle and you pull it off and in front of the flywheel, it's got a, pla it's got a, a metal ring that goes on the outside then it's got a flywheel, and then it's got another metal ring. Maybe it's got two metal rings. You lay this out exactly like it goes on the car. You take the two metal rings, you put them on the ground, you take the flywheel, and then you have the one on top. That way you know it goes just like that. These little tips and tricks are going to save you from sitting there, scratching your head, trying to figure out where stuff goes, where the bolts are, which bolts go to what, and you're not going to be taking apart things. You're not going to be putting back together things and then taking them back apart because, oh, those bolts were too long. They belong to something else. This is how you become more efficient. This is how you get things done quicker. Looks a little crazy. Now, why don't you, so you ask, why don't I buy magnetic trays? Well, why would I buy magnetic trays? First of all, all the stuff's all over the floor. I don't need magnetic trays. Nothing's sticking to the floor. But second of all, why would I go spend money on magnetic trays when I have free Tupperware containers? That's what I'm trying to tell you. These are free, super easy, super efficient. I'm telling you, try this out. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about this. Let me know how it's a, how it saved you some money. Let's go check out what it looks like when you're taking apart a Duramax rear engine cover, which turned out to be a lot bigger of a job than I than I anticipated. Let's check it out. All right, here we go. We're just gonna pan out and look at all of this mess. We got a transmission, a differential, a transfer case, a drive line, a rear engine cover, flywheel, upper oil pan is in the parts washer. Lower oil pan is here. You got the tire off, the wheel liner out, exhaust hanger, cross member. Okay, so with doing this, one of the things that I wanna point out with all of this crazy chaotic mess I have here, you can see right here, this is a rag with all the bolts from the rear cover. I have them all laid out showing how they go crossover plate there got the flywheel there flywheel bolts rear main seal and you can see I have all these Tupperware containers riddled all over the floor here is the the front engine cover okay you can see how I have the bolts in the cover got bolts in that Got a transfer case here. We got bolts there. We got a front differential. We got a rear cross member. We have another cross member. You can see I have the bolts laid out in the cross member. Lug nuts in the wheel cover. Push pins in the plastic cover for the wheel liner. I have all of these Tupperware containers showing all the different things and where they go. So I know that whenever I get ready to put the lower cover on, there's the bolts. When I get ready to put the upper cover on, there's the bolts. So basically, what I'm trying to show you in this video is why it is important to have Tupperware containers. These things are free mashed potatoes, Easter egg dyeing cups, 
old AC oil cup. All these little containers, lunch meat containers, you use these containers all the time. Don't throw them away. Keep them, clean them, use them. Use them for this, for organization. Show you how to be more efficient with all of this stuff. Bolts up here for the side cross member. These are all really important things that you want to do because when you go to put this thing back together, maybe it's Monday, maybe it's Friday, maybe it's two weeks from now. This one's got a head gasket leaking now. Maybe we are pulling the motor. So that means that all of this is going to change. However, I have all my organization. I know what everything is and where it all is. Got the transmission strapped to the jack just because I don't know how long it's going to be there. Very, very important things to do. Keep all your stuff together. Organization is key. So now that you've checked out my hot mess of a Duramax rear engine cover with Tupperware containers everywhere, you can kind of see how I've got things in a little bit of an organized chaos. It's chaos because it's it's was a lot larger of a job than I planned, but it's separated all out. I know exactly how it's going to go, and it's going to go back together pretty easy. So leave a comment below. Let me know what you do to become more efficient. Or hey, let me know if you don't need any of this. If you just throw it all on a pile and you can figure it out. And I'm not talking about jobs you've done three, four, eight, ten, twenty 10, 20 times. I'm talking about first time job, big jobs. Let me know if you need to separate that stuff out. I worked with a guy who used to throw everything in a pile. He would whip it all back together. Now I just started in the industry, so I actually don't know how fast he was. I know he can get it all together, but I know I'm fast. So I know that the way I do it works and I make money doing it. And that's why I'm here letting you know what you can do to become more efficient and make more money. Thanks for checking out Nuts and Bolts with Tone. I appreciate you watching the video. Comment below. Let me know what you think about this. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit that bell. You get notified of all of my future content, which you want to watch that because I got a lot of good stuff coming. And check me out on Instagram at Nuts and Bolts with Tone. And that's, see you next time.